Today's episode is sponsored to you by A&H Provisions. Meat and hot dogs that are so good, even Goyim understand how amazing they are. It's the next level of kosher food, and the website is kosherdogs.net. Get yours, enjoy them, a and Provisions. By the time this airs, King Charles will be King, King. Charles with fully the whole King. fully, fully coronation. bar mitzvahed. He's in there, and uh, you were just saying that you were saying that he that the monarchy does not bring as much business as people think it does yeah, to mo- England. Uh, uh, everyone likes to jump to this argument to defend the monarchy of like, oh, the amount of tourism dollars that they bring in offsets whatever costs they create. And I was saying that there's been like studies done by like economists and like people who have actually looked at the numbers and it's actually not true. And what do you think should happen to the monarchy? I think the whole thing should be dissolved. It should be liquidated and it should be sold wholesale and all and it should go back to the people of England. You should not have a monarchy with a like literal palaces while you have people in poverty like you better be the most idyllic society and by the way did you know that the royal family owns like the most uh i don't know if it's coastline in terms of like private yeah. beach property or um some sort of like maritime property and that, they own the goose it, the geese the the, go- the geese they own like the entire <laughs> coastline of the UK. Of bird. She owns all the birds of some some type of all birds. Swan. The, the swans. swans. She owns technically swans. all swans in the UK belong, belong to, to the royal family. Okay, I, yep. I'm Stop not. It. I'm not. Don't trash the whole thing. Don't uh, liquidate the whole thing. But Buckingham Palace. Turn it into homeless shelters. No, no. What's wrong with you? <laughs> No, uh, Buckingham Palace, you sh- it should be something that we're like, it becomes condominiums and people get help for the nation. And then it's it's also a museum kind of a thing. It's in the middle of London. It's two knuckleheads living in there. You don't need it. They have other places. Go to Windsor, go to the other places, and, uh, and that's it. No, don't go to Windsor. Take those down too. Uh, listen, <laughs> for some context, I mean, this has been mentioned on the podcast before, but I think it's worth repeating that. My mother was born in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Yes. And I was regaled with stories of her as a small child throwing rocks at British soldiers and was very anti-monarchy in my house growing up from day one. So this is not a new we have point not of view. been told that. Yeah, we yeah, have. I've mentioned it before. He's mentioned it. With yeah. the rocks? Oh, yeah. My mom has crazy stories. There, yeah, she used to throw rocks at British soldiers. Chic. Right, but okay, she, she, she didn't throw at the royal family because they weren't there. She would have if she, she would have. Okay, probably. but they weren't there. They wasn't. They, they weren't busy with that. They were busy running around getting suits. Um, the can the, we introduce the show? What, we're we're deep in it already. Wow. Now. Hello, welcome. Hello, and welcome to and here's Modi. This episode is sponsored by if all A and talk- H. What? If all this talk of the monarchy is making you hungry, mm. <laughs> head to www.kosherdogs.net to visit our sponsor, a A&H Provisions, That's the right. finest purveyor of deli meats and uh, assortment of... Glot kosher. Glot kosher yum-yums. And, good uh, gazook. Good gazook. Yeah. You said it well. You said it well. I said it better than you've been saying it, so we got to get I've through been, it somehow. I've been doing good. You've been going, boat or sponsor... Just get it out. I got it out. Just you are asleep at the wheel. Off with promo code Modi, www.kosherdogs.net. And if you want to visit the factory, call Seth and tell him we sent you. Uh, he'll give you a tour. He's so proud of it. Okay. Sorry, I, I didn't know I was doing a bad job of promoting it. It's just a little sleepy. You got to put the pedal to the I, metal. I'm over having here. a mini hot dog party for all my son and his friends this weekend with a ton of mini hot dogs that I got from Seth. From really? A. No. No? No, I am. You, <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, she's making this up. It sounds so good. <laughs> um, Seth very kindly sent my godparents in Florida a care package oh. from A&H because she, that's her favorite food is hot dogs. My godmother, she, she loves hot dogs. And when she found out that our 
sponsor was a hot dog purveyor. The best hot dog She was purveyor. like, what are you doing? How do you not send me any of these hot dogs? So I texted Seth and I was like, can you please do me a huge favor? And yeah. she was so happy. It like made her her week. And she got the, they sent, he sent merch, I think. Yeah. Oh, that's so cute. She yeah. sent us a picture. She did send me a picture. Um, also, we sent the Mashiach Energy merch. Apparently, my godfather runs around the house just screaming that. <laughs> Mashiach Energy? Yeah. Good. He really Good. latches on to certain phrases. Good for him. Um, we were talking about what the monarchy. The monarchy. I d my uh, to close it up. I literally believe the monarchy was given to us by God, by Hashem, just so we can have the show, The Crown. It's ridiculous. I, that's it's what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think just so we can have that show, we had it throughout the pandemic to watch, and and that's the only reason that whole family existed, just so we can have this amazing show, The Crown, and we watched it and it got us through. Uh, me, at least. That's my my, my final take. No. I think the centuries of like oppression and violence on behalf of the crown does not make up for one uh, good TV show. But as long but, as you're entertained. But as long I'm as, entertained. Yeah. Yeah. Then end of discussion. Okay. Speaking of entertaining. Speaking of entertaining. Yes. I don't, I mean, I don't know if this is a big reveal, but. Drum roll, please. In February, I flew to Florida to meet the two of you mm -hmm. in a super covert operation. No? We're working on a book um, a, kind of about me. Um, kind of? And kind Leo, of. too. And um, we've been writing it. It was an idea that... It wasn't my idea to, have to do this book. Uh, people have approached me and said, you should do a book. And... Uh, and the, the re, re, real people, not just like some yent on the street, <laughs> people in the book industry said, hello, you should do a book. So we've been, and Periel is, is actually a very funny journey on this book, no? Yes. Yeah. One of the people that was said you should do it um, was a, a, a big agent and a, and, a, and a fat, no, we shouldn't mention. Mm -hmm. Okay, never mind, let's leave that alone. Um, we come to the point where we realized we, 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 spoke to another writer and it didn't like it didn't gel and then periel goes hello are you kidding me i've written two books i've written two books and i know you better than you know you yeah. and uh, i think i said i'm gonna divorce you right if somebody else writes this book with you so periel and i were working on it and i i've never been to therapy in my life and i the one when, when i we have know. gone to therapy I, I hated it um and this writing this book has been like therapy no it's unpacking years and years. Like I'm telling the stories of what happened. I'm like, oh my God, did that really happen? Well, in a lot of ways, you're one of the very few people I've met that maybe really, truly, genuinely does not need to go to therapy. I've been told that by therapists. <laughs> <laughs> sit in for drain my cup nonstop and i literally went to i i that happened to me once remember what's his name i'm not gonna mention the name but someone said there's this amazing therapist on the upper west side you have to see him he's, blah, 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 blah. he's an israeli guy and you have to say that so I, okay i made the appointment hour and a half and it was 700 dollars. Mm -hmm. i was in shock and i spoke to him and I, and I i literally i said you know i'm gonna give all of it uh -huh. here it is and he said you're fine <laughs> he said you're fine there are people with real problems walking around. Yeah, people with say. real problems. I'm okay. Pick your, you pick your head up. Do you agree with that? Do you think that... Well, I've also never been to therapy, that's so a I don't feel equipped to answer that question. But, but but when we worked on the chapter with you, with Periel, it hit you that day. Girl, it hit me when she came down to Florida. Like That the, what? The, the weight of the, uh, the enormity of the task to distill all of this lived experience right. into yeah. a book yeah but your when we worked on the section with you and how we met and you yeah, know we went through it and deleted most of it yeah but to relive it to rehash it it's like th it's therapy kind of okay first of all we didn't delete most of it that's number one when you are writing a book, you have to get a lot of things onto a page before you understand what the story is, I think. And let me just stop you there for a second. And when we say get it onto a page, so 
Leo orders this number one little thing where you record your voice, and you found some app that puts that on paper. Transcribes it. So now I get to also see and hear how I talk. Yeah. Right, so which here, is basically in Yiddish with English words. <laughs> right. So here, so I the, went to the store, and you shouldn't know what they had there. Right. <laughs> so here's the thing: I think that one of the important things to for, to know, and that's very interesting and unique about this experience, is that you are dyslexic. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hello. And so in many situations, if I'm, or the, in the past anyway, that I would be writing with somebody else would be that even if I'm the person who's actually physically writing it, I would then give it to you and you would read it and make notes and then give it back to me. That's not that happening. That can't happen here. Yeah. No. So we figured out a workaround, right. which is that you and I have these marathon conversations. The first one was 72 hours long yes. in Florida. And then, you know, you have to kind of like distill it into a story, into a chapter and then break that up. But then instead of giving it to you, it's like drag queen story hour. <laughs> What? <laughs> Wait, what? what do you mean it's like drag queen story? I have to actually read it to him. Oh. So first he says it, then I transcribe it, then I take that transcription and I try to, yeah. you know, figure out everything he said. And out of that, we have to kind of mold it into what that story <laughs> is. But instead of handing it to him, we have to sit down and I have to read it to him. You sound at a first, little at, frustrated. Not at, at all. At I first, think it's amazing. At first, I, at first she re she's reading this to me and I go, she's the worst writer in the world. <laughs> She's probably the worst writer on earth. I don't know how she even, I know that that's bad grammar. And she goes, it's you. This is how you talk. Right. This is the and transcription of your actual yes. uh, my, voice my, and yeah. thoughts. So there's the actual transcription um, and that n nobody writes like they talk. But to me, the parts that I'm most proud of are a few things, but one of them is to be able to take that and then be able to capture his voice mm -hmm. on the page. Yeah, and has there has how how has this uh, project impacted your overall perception of Modi or his work now that you have this backstory? If anything, she's probably a bigger fan. <laughs> if anything, no, no. Uh, there's nothing. Yes, I think if yeah. anything, I'm probably a bigger fan. There's nothing that surprised me. Yeah. Um, it's been, you know, a real labor of love, truly. Yeah. I mean, it's a joy and it's a thrill and it's an honor. And I feel really lucky to be oh. able to be part oh. of telling this story. And it's Really, the part that's most fun is because he's like, no, no, what, what is that? What is that? You don't need that. You don't need that story. But it's like getting things out of him that then you haven't really heard anything polished yet. You've been there for I've like... I've been in the coal mines, honey. Yeah, you've been... But the yeah. chapter... Nary a gem has come my way. Yeah. yeah but the chapter... gem? Nary a gem. <laughs> What's he doing? Nothing polished has come my way. I've Nary. seen... Okay. Nary, Nary a gem. He <laughs> hasn't... You haven't heard anything that's been polished. You um, have heard the honing mm -hmm. and like the... But the parts that are finished... Um, he was even in shock when I read them back yeah. to him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not, not only do you say it, then to hear it back. So it's like twice. It's like double therapy. Because when I read it back, like what you were witnessing the other day is I have to read it back to him, but then we have to fix it right. so that it works and stuff has to be taken out. And then the next draft is when it's like, wow. Yeah, yeah. And it's I'm I think you're ready to hand it in already, no? But you're well, schlepping I, I, it out. I I'm not schlepping it out. We I wrote more. We wrote more than what was required. The guy gives us a, a, a list, and um, it says you how need to put to, a proposal together. A, 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 how, you don't have to write the whole book to how make to a put book. a proposal together. Is wow. what we've learned. Right. right for people who don't know who have and not embarked on this. It says like journey. one full chapter uh, summary for all the other chapters. She's got seven fully written chapters already. She's a perfectionist. She's, I know, but what did you say today? Perfection is what gets in the in the way of. I said, don't let um, perfection get in the way of good enough. Yeah. Any favorite stories that you are willing or able to share? 
I mean, there are parts that None really of them that bring involve me. That don't involve yeah, you? Yeah, nothing that involves me. Why n- well, what if one of my favorites it does I know which one you're going to say, and which we're not going to talk about <laughs> that what, on what, the podcast. What, what story? What, um, what, what do you think? He knows. I know which one it is. I want you to both hit the same... I'm going to count to three, and no. at the same time, I want to see if it's the same story. One, two, three. No, you have to <laughs> say it! Both of you stink. My favorite Leo story is definitely Gold Star Gay. Uh, don't talk oh, yeah, about that now. About Stop that. that. Um, don't do that. Not, not on the, not on s- there are parts that really bring tears to my eyes. There, oh. there are parts that are really beautiful and moving about... You have a friend who passed away. Who, yeah. Um... You know, well, who I haven't thought about since we began doing this book. And he's like, I don't understand why you're writing about this. Mm-hmm. Like, he, like, you, like, fought me on it. And it became a full chapter. And it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and he, the neighbor. We get, you get to, to, to relive yeah, our neighbor. I'm looking forward to the chapter about Hirsch Huber. Mm-hmm. Um, may he rest in peace. You think that, like, you're sniveling away from here. I haven't gotten my claws into you No, yet. I know there's a Google Doc with my name on it in my <laughs> inbox when I get home. That I oh, no, no, no. I'm not through. talking about that. I'm talking about, like, Oh, you mean me, yeah. me specifically? Yes, yes. No, but something that I hope translates to the page, really, because, you know, you live something and then you tell the story and you're like, am I portraying it? Like, do people get a sense of, like, the reality of what was ex- being experienced? Because... Those years when you were taking care of our neighbor, Hirsch Huber, down the hall, were like some of the most intense moments of our relationship, kind of. When you no, you were also it. taking care of him. And you didn't realize that. No, but I watched. It made me fall more in love with you because oh. I'm watching you ca- take care of someone who you technically have no relation to. Um, and you were deep in his life, in his finances, in his medical care with his family, like getting his body to Israel when he passed away like you were don't ruin the book all in on this guy and it was a very um, see that's the part that I haven't gotten my claws into yet for that chapter remember I made a note that says yeah I found all of his um you know what was insane was and I do the same thing he saved all of his documents of you know he was in the war he was in Europe and then he went from there they sent him to uh, a yeshiva in Belgium, and from there he got to America. And all throughout this, whatever passport, whatever documents that had his name on it or his picture, he saved them all. Okay, the fact that I wasn't told this until right I now. I found it today. I forgot I made it. So I I put them all out on like a de- on, my, on my table, and I videotaped them all. Luckily, I did that because then he had a bad episode, and he ripped them all up. <gasps> yeah, 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 yeah. He had a bad episode, um, and he ripped them all up. And um, it's like you just see him, like you know, from Belgium, and then he went the whatever. Uh, what kind sent. of an episode did he have? The same when you're old and you fall apart. So that no, so when when we were watching Succession, yes. and the guy had the UTI, yeah. and he was uh, acting like out of it mentally. Right. I was like, I know this. This is yeah, what happens yeah. he when had old people get UTIs. Hatzala came and picked your brain them up, goes crazy. and it was a whole thing. It was, oh, my God. Um, Wow. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. It's the, so we're unpacking a lot of things when we unpack. Yeah, we're unpacking a lot yeah. of things. <laughs> and, and it's a good thing that Leo's around because <laughs> no. I feel like there's information that, like, I, there's a lot that I know to ask. Yeah. But then... You're not like exactly like an open book. No. You know, like you've got. Really? I'm just kidding. Are you kidding? Oh, that you're was kidding. A, that was I a, was, uh, <laughs> and that was, an, I was, uh, that was ironic. Uh, not ironic. That was sarcastic. Uh, sarcastic yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. uh-huh, yeah. All right. Um, What's it been like for you? No. So like the other day when we had that five hour session, Leo wasn't home. At the end, I was like. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> And Leo comes home, hi, I did arms at the gym. And I'm like, okay, good. But then you had your session with with uh, with Periel and, and and we did your you also afterwards like, wow, I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. You know, so like, boom, all of a sudden you kinda had to relive it. But they're crazy stories. Yeah. Yeah. And they're funny. Yeah, they're funny. Some of, Some them, of them are, are very really funny. funny. Yes. Um is it like what you you were expecting it to be or the experience of writing this? I did not expect and I didn't know how I was I was like well, how am I writing a book? How am I going to ever 
tell the stories. Uh, it seems like a Herculean task. It looked like a to, very to Herculean start. task, but we went, we started. And, baby uh, steps. Baby steps. Baby steps. Um, I, I appreciate steps. Uh, the trust. That's that's for sure. I think it's because... Yeah, I can honestly say I don't think there's anyone else on the planet as uniquely qualified to write this book as you. Aww, if you should have you. seen who they tried to pair me up with first. <laughs> Modi was so It was this sad. woman and she was in her house. A ghostwriter. A ghostwriter. This and is more she, of a co-writing. Yeah, thing. 100% is a co-writer. And so she was at her dining room table for the Zoom that we had and behind her was like a wall with like... but the. The wall had like a, a square chopped out of it. Not chopped out, like a cutout. The, a like cutout. A, uh -huh. So you could see it, into the kitchen or something. But not, it wasn't even the kitchen. Uh -huh. And it was like, and I, all I could focus, uh, the only time I was talking to her, I was just like with the therapist. I just looking at her, I go, it looks like you're, you're a receptionist. Oh it looks like, like when people come in to check in behind you. That's all I could think about. I the love same thing when I went to my therapist and the only thing I think about was how she furnitured so the So you place. have trouble concentrating and that's why you didn't think you could ever write a book. Is oh, that, that's yeah, what yeah, you're yeah, trying yeah, to yeah, say. Yeah. yeah, I was hoping like after that one meeting on Zoom, I was like, oh, and you were there. You were like, you saw it and like, oh, good. Now they all realize we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't have to write a book. <laughs> <laughs> we can drop this book thing because I'm, I'm not talking to her every well, day ever. I think a book is good to have in general but much like a podcast and an instagram account it's it's almost becoming like an essential ingredient to like the overall ecosystem of being an entertainer today. yeah like it 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 becomes a vehicle for all these other things and you see it with other comedians writing books it's so interesting um, I but, do like they, it, but do they do they like, like zach zimmerman he wrote he, he probably a, sat there with a legit yeah. writer yeah he sat there yeah. Yeah. so here's the thing that's really interesting for me I am in many ways a writer first. Mm -hmm. You know, I was formally trained as a writer. I went to graduate school for writing yeah. and I've written two books and a lot of other things. But I always wanted to do stand up. OK. Like comedy was always like the thing that I was scared to do, but always wanted to do. So I made the you know, the turn to performing much later than I started writing. So in a lot of ways, um, it's kind of this like magical coming together mm -hmm. of things that like I'm able to do. Full circle. Moment. Yeah, full circle. Um, it does really seem like it's become very popular now for comedians to write books. Well, I, I, I it's also I told you I read this book, um, Everything They Don't Teach You in Film School. Mm -hmm. And basically they talk about it's basically about why you don't need to go to film school. And then it also says is like uh, the main takeaway at the end of the book is like if you want to write to make a movie, you need to write a book first. Okay. Wow. And not only is that just how the industry works nowadays in terms of like studios buying intellectual property and storylines, uh, but also like you need to be able to distill your idea into a book form before it can ever live on screen. Mm. So I thought that I can't stupid. wait to make a TV show. That's really exciting. Like well, that, that's who's gonna play me? You are. <laughs> yeah, but what about young me? Um, you, you. Modi, yeah, you just do, do grow your hair. Modi out. met me when I was twenty-two. No, 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 no. He's I'm your gonna, baby. What does Shabbat mean? That's, is it, <laughs> I never Wait, asked that, you that, Shabbat that, That's meant. not in the book. First of all, it doesn't matter if you actually ask that or not. That's a great line. That's I did a podcast today. I did a podcast with um, the Down Low. It's called. It's this. Um, they reach. Jewish college students throughout all of Europe. They have 160 listeners, um, 160,000 listeners of all kinds of uh, Dyslexia. Uh, campuses yeah. and um, and um, and all kinds of. And they also have like a, like a gay thing. And uh, and the kid, at the, you could tell the, that the the person interviewing me like knew and listens and he goes, goes, "How does Leo know so much about Judaism?" Mm -hmm. I go, "Cause he's." been immersed in it for eight years yeah you try living with modi for eight years and yeah not know anything about <laughs> here's the Judaism. thing we need a chapter about that uh, about, about about me yeah well it's just funny folks because you know you spend your whole life running from organized religion and then you become sidekick to jewish extraordinaire 
Yeah, but Nobody not religion. You we were on a spiritual journey. It's not yeah, a religious not journey. Well, but you've said it's like the universe is telling me something. No, but you said in one of our first episodes, I think, or maybe it never made it onto the air, that you knew that you were look what were you were looking for three things in a yes. partner. Um one. I I spoke this out loud when I was on a little manifest manifesting mm -hmm. kick. Uh, I said this out loud to myself in the car. I said, if I'm going to be in a, a relationship with someone, they need to be three things. One is they need to be funny. Two is they need to be spiritual. And three is they, I would like for them to be culturally different from me in some sort of way. Not to like exotic, make something exotic, but more just like something that I could learn from uh, and grow from. So and it still, was either me or Carrot Top. <laughs> And I got, ended up with Modi Rosenfeld, <laughs> the Jewish comedian. Yeah. yeah. Out of all of those three things. So that's a so, true story. Yeah. Who's going to play you? Who's going to play young you? Do you know? Um, I like that he's given a lot of thought to this, obviously. I, no, I actually haven't. I don't know. Maybe you have to think about it. I already said who I know who's going to play young you. Who? Alex Edelman. Oh, my God. Really? Mm-hmm. What no? What it doesn't not work, but it doesn't it, not work. It, it does, doesn't not work, but yeah. yeah. It's a great That's funny. It's a great casting. It's funny, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um okay. anyway. So send in who you would think should play me if you're listening yeah, to this. That's yeah. True. Tag me in their Instagram accounts so I could have an identity crisis. So the thing Lana that Del Rey should play you, young you. <laughs> Lana Del Rey. <laughs> it's gonna be that guy from the birdcage. What's his name? <laughs> Agador, <laughs> yeah, that's gonna play me. Agador. We need like a twenty, like a young twenty something, like super hot, like up and coming. Okay, but this is what I was gonna say. The funniest thing to about this whole thing to me is that the writer that you didn't like, and for me too, nobody read anything. No, it, it wasn't like you read my books and you were like Periel is. Oh perfect no! Oh no! I remember. So we had a few episodes where you spoke about your books, I, and I know the, the the titles are very like super. What? On my knees. On my knees, and That's my a... bush doesn't get played with or something. <laughs> How's it go? The only bush I trust is my own. The right. first, okay. First of all, the first... so we never hold on. So let me just tell the story. But so, say the right titles though. The only bush I trust is my own. Yeah. And on my knees. Yeah. Okay. So those are the titles. And we heard about that in the pod. I never read the book because I don't read books like that. And like, like I don't read books, period. And then we had this one meeting with this agent who was looking for it to be a very, like a Jewish story book type of a thing. He wanted me to write a book without even knowing that I was gay. Right. That's what he so he was looking for something to hit the, the the Jewish community, and then we suggested we know who we think we should write this. It would be Periel, and then I googled your books and saw the cover, uh -huh. and I was like, wow! Shout out Mark Seliger. <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, I was like, wow! And this, I remember sending it to, to when he. I was thinking when he looked at him, he was like, wow, this is not what the, the journey he was looking to do for the book. I can't tell you how that enrages me. Yeah. No, but look, we had to go through that. Just because it's infuriating to be judged. Um, Literally by the cover of your book. By the cover of your book. Right, especially ah! when the cover of the book is so good. But also, like, not the New York Times review, not, like, any of... No. He the, just, like, what it looks like. And also that you guys were like, yeah, she's the perfect person to do this without reading okay the sometimes you need somebody <laughs> to get to your next you, no, you need somebody to get to the next person mm -hmm. and that was uh that's what that is people date people and you that's who you needed to get to the next right. person i had this thought the other day yeah. about the entertainment industry not that i know anything about it Ugh, but. will you stop saying that it's so annoying when you say that it's not true you know more about the entertainment industry than like 99 no but i was people. saying like you know you meet these people and like that last time we were in LA when we met with those people. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they whine and dine you and they make yeah. all these promises and it's like yeah, it's yeah. like dating because you get all excited oh. and yeah, you feel yeah, all yeah. these no, feelings. I don't get excited anymore. And and you're like, is this the one? Like, I don't know. It's yeah, like yeah. do you feel what I'm feeling? There's a spark and then and then they just like 
ghost you and no. it's like so frustrating and it happens in so many different arenas but you pick and corners. Up, you, you learn what you need from that me meeting it's the just guy, you have okay. to, you have I to don't go mention the name, a lot of bad apples they're not bad apples but you pick like, up what you need to pick up from that meeting when he, we were tell, talking about you and how like you're a problem solver and he said he's not a problem solver he's a producer Mm. And that's when I, I realized, yes, you're the producer. You're a producer. But or the, that other thing you were working on in Israel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That whole but hullabaloo. Yeah. I'm, and not, like, I'm not here to get wined and dined. I literally got a can of tuna. Yeah. What do you mean? Wined and dined you were not. Oh, no, 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 no. no. I'm talking about these people. Like, they have these amazing ideas and, uh, and they, they, do this and yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's very L.A. It's very you know what L.A. It is? energy. Just hocking China. Absolutely just <laughs> drained no, People the cup. don't know for everything of every. Finished piece of work you see, there's a thousand dead bodies behind right. it. That, yeah, that were that's not it. The thing is, finished and is that you have to do the work. That's what it really is. You have to sit there and you have to actually do the hard work. And Absolutely. that's where it's not like this like magical thing that yeah. happens. It looks like that at the end. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like how many years right. have you been working on the special? Like if you sat down and you watched the spe the spe the tape and you're like, oh my God, it's so polished and so clean, but how many shows have you done? Hundreds. Yeah, Thousands. hundreds. Thousands. Hundreds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, 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 yeah. But some people just uh, no. But dating is a good analogy. It is a good analogy. It's emotional and it's a roller coaster, and you read into all these social cues and body language and text messages and emails and like what is happening here. And but I feel like just... in New York, those dates that are for work are like, hey, this is what we can do. This we can that. No, and then you get back next week. No not doing it with whereas in LA yeah, they that's true they simmer on it and they f keep going with it and they don't don't let it go and like oh god just and I realize it's not going away with you so so let's move on and, there's you know, a lot less bullshit here yeah LA is so bullshitty mm -hmm. you know the meetings the meetings the meetings I, I have a gig I have a gig tomorrow in LA. Mm -hmm. I'm flying in that morning. Oh my god! And flying after no, the gig, I have a thank you, JetBlue, for your one a.m. flight. Yeah, he's I'm going right trip. out. I'm not going on this trip, but um, no. really, there are some gigs um, that are nice and smooth and easy. And I would say we seal the deal on about fifteen to twenty emails total. Yeah. And then there are gigs that reach like the 85, 90, 120 emails. These are no. ladies. These are yeah. ladies that did not. St and and uh, it's I could see the frustration in Leo's face. One hundred and twenty of nothing. Just like little things, like like last round of show, two round of shows ago when we were in LA, like they'll be like. Um, which the fact that we were talking that long ago about this show on Saturday is insane. They'll be like, oh, we actually want to come to the show, but it's sold out. And then I do all the legwork to like get them on the guest list. And then the day of the show, they're both sick and like now not coming to the show. But that involved, that alone, that interaction was like 15 emails. You know what I mean? So then it's like, I just want, I feel unprofessional saying this in front of a microphone, but I just, there are some gigs that you want to be done and yeah. over with. And this is in that pile for sure. So at what this are, point, what are it's some such a stupid show. It's like, no, but sometimes those gigs are the best ones. Yes. Don't yeah. forget when yeah. we were in Miami. At that and they're whole, nice. They're not doing anything wrong. No, no, no. It's but but what like, are some things that you would like people to know about like standard operating procedure? That's There is no standard operating procedure. Every show is different. Mm -hmm. Every, every situation is different. Um, I try to operate from a sense of like radical transparency, like to my detriment, I think like just because I'm not smart enough to do anything else. Like I don't know how to juggle, keep all those plates spinning and like bullshit people. So I'm like, this is what's happening. Um, and I think some people, I don't know. They, I just think some people genuinely don't have good communications. You have to also understand that this is their obsessed. This is for an event for a, a, a school, um, and the people working on it, this is all they do is obsess about this. Mm -hmm. So they like have a their whole year leading up to this. Right. So event. the whole year, um, they have their um, probably every Tuesday at they have their meeting about it. On them like I, do, I, I do. I do feel bad, but they don't. But I'm I'm explaining what's happening in in their head. They also think it's the only thing on my mind. Right. Yeah. Is that meanwhile on, it's like your third show of the week of the week like of the yeah it's literally I was in Philly last night and, yeah. and and they're just like 
And it, hi, we had a meeting, and I think we're going to do a plated salad instead of a served salad. So just let Modi know that we'll probably be going on at 10 minutes earlier. I just want to let you know about that. And back in the day when it was a phone call, you finished the phone call, you're done. But now there's an email that has to be answered. Right, right. And so then it's crazy. So um, some A little tiny detail that's been getting me a little bit worked up lately yeah. is that in my negotiations, just because your schedule is getting increasingly more hectic, oh, that routing you back and forth you know, to your home base of New York, New York and then to whatever you need to go doesn't always logistically make the most sense. Right. So lately I've been trying to get you at least two nights in a hotel room uh, leading up to the show. Not And I, I even say I might not use the both nights, but it's a possibility you might be responsible for like two nights of hotel accommodation. Right. Just so I could have the wiggle room of routing you easy like and it's good for them too they should want you in town early or uh earlier than you need to with the you never know what's gonna happen with these flights and they when they push back on that on that like extra 200 dollars or whatever it is for the f- for the hotel room i'm like it's not 200 dollars. it's 350 ugh. to 450 uh, whatever it is. Whatever, no it is. Do- whatever it is but first of all if i was them my biggest fear is that I'm coming in the day of. Yeah, of yeah exactly. That's what why the I'm hell like, are they thinking? A, yeah. If I'm giving you the opportunity to bring me in earlier, yeah. Yeah. you can go to sleep that night going, he's already in town. He's already yeah. in town. Yeah. Like, everything's fine. Yeah. Not like, hey, there's a thunderstorm in the middle of America and the planes aren't going this and that. Yeah. 100%. Or, or whatever yeah. the hell the new excuses the airlines have Don't now. Don't nickel and dime me. Don't like, nickel I'm and not, dime. I'm not, I'm trying to make everyone's life easier, really. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so you're going tomorrow in the morning. You fly tomorrow morning to L.A. and then you're doing the show, and then you're going back to the airport that's for the one a.m. flight. The best thing in the and world. Back oh my god, JetBlue with Mint. I have the the the, the empty seat in the, the. Have you been on JetBlue yes. Mint? It's two one two one. Oh, two, and that's one. that's another thing. When <laughs> when I was booking the, the the travel for this, and I go. Are you booking the travel or do you want me to book and send you receipts? Like, what's going on? And they're like, why don't you book? So, like, I say, okay, this is the flight I'm putting him on. And it's the JetBlue flight, which is, like, I think a little bit more expensive oh, than, no. uh, than the other flights. And they're like, would he be able to fly American instead? And I'm like, no. You don't understand. Like, he's getting on the plane, and landing, sure, yeah. and going back that night. Like, he needs to be comfortable. He needs to sleep. Like, why are you... Yeah. Like, you told me to book this. Fly Spirit Air. No, we're yeah. not flying Spirit <laughs> Air. No, it has to be, it's a business class ticket. It says on the card, but but still, but you not know, all business class is created equal. Not all business class. Very nice. You should yeah. put that on a, on a the T-shirt. Title. Not all business class. Jeff Lumet, you can use that if you want to give me some free uh, t- nuts airplane ticket. They give you free nuts on that thing. They give you a whole stack of, but only in business class. It's it's it's. But definitely, but they're not all created equal. This would be flat lay and all that. American does not. I had a I very think. upsetting experience on my way back from London last time. Wow. I, I, I got the weirdest configuration of an airplane business class that I've ever seen. Okay. I was facing backwards. I was facing backwards by the window and I had someone next to me. I can't even describe it. When, I, he, said, when he sent me the pictures, I thought it was my dyslexia. It oh was, my god! That's how bad that figura- configuration of the plane was. Yeah, I've sure. never even seen that. Yeah, I, so when we landed, I was going backwards. I was like, "I'm gonna throw up." But no, but the 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 thing that I that does I've seen that before, by the way. But I've never seen the way that she'd have to, she and or he or they <laughs> would have to hand you the tray of your food through the pot, like over the person next to me. Over the person, like so, he, he's. It's not. It's you not, can't do it on whatever. people just listening to this. But anyway, it's just it was insane. But it was America. It was uh, a British here? Airways. People annoying me about yeah. booking shows. Um, it's also, you know, and, and which by the way also bring, bring us back to the beginning. You went to London to hear Honey Dijon yeah. play a print works. You didn't go there to go see the royal family drive by. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. But now back in the day when you used to fly coach. What's that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the good old days. <laughs> Back in the olden days when you used to fly coach, did you ever think you would be having these problems of which way your first class ticket seat would be facing? Baruch Hashem, these are our problems now. Exactly. <laughs> Listen, everyone's on their own journey and this is my journey. And my journey yeah. just I'm only going to... forwards, not backwards, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Literally and figuratively. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we had a good story. Yeah. You have a title for your uh, not all business classes created equally. Right. You have a title for the podcast. Uh, and we, we have a new chapter that we need to put in description. Not a full chapter. Mm-hmm. Which one? Me? Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Um, ModiLive.com for all upcoming shows. Um, by the time this airs, we'll be on the precipice of your West Coast tour. Uh-huh. Vancouver, really? Seattle, San Francisco. Oh, really? Already? I mean, in a few weeks. We're in oh. May. And uh, Town Hall, hopefully it's not sold for you by then. Or for me, I hope it is sold yeah. out by then. But Town Hall, December 21st. Uh, get your tickets on ModiLive.com. Bring your friends. Get your tickets and get a few extras. Be the friend who brings the friends to the comedy club, to the comedy show. Um, and uh, and that, that, that creates Mashiach energy. Thank you all for listening and uh, be in touch.